So the only thing left to do then is create the order summary page, which will redirect the customer over to once they have made a payment, entered all their details, and uh, we'll just present them with their order summary. So to get started then, we are going to update our order controller, and we're gonna create a new method in here. So we already have our index and our create, but now we want a method to actually show an order. So let's very quickly create this. So we're gonna say show, and how are we gonna show an order? Well, we're gonna do that via a hash in the URI. And then we have our request in here. We have our response. We also have our view in here as well. And we also want to inject order in so we can grab that order. So in here then, let's just return a view. We haven't created this yet, obviously, but we will do that in just a moment. So we're gonna render out passing in response, and that's order show.twig. So let's create this just over here now so we can get rid of all this. And over in resources and order, let's create a new view called show.twig. So in here then we just want to extend our base template. So it's templates app.twig. And then obviously here we have our content. And we'll just end our block. So this will be the order. So let's update our roots then just to uh, show an order by a hash. So we'll duplicate this one down. We'll add in a hash there, really straightforward. We'll change over the method and we'll change this to order.show. So now if we just choose an order from the database, so let's just choose any one for now, and we'll clear this up in just a moment. We can go over to order, paste in that hash, and of course we have this order error because we don't, uh, yeah, we haven't pulled this into our controller, but we can do that very quickly. So let's just pull this in now and just bump that up. And there we go. So we now have our order page and we can pass in an order like that. Now what I'm actually going to do is get rid of all of the orders in the database and anything else here. So we can literally just uh, truncate all of this except products just so we can start fresh. And we're going to go and create an order now. So I'm just going to add a couple of items in. What you want to do is while you're testing this, add a few items and then also have different quantities as well because we're going to test showing them on that page. So let's add six of these. Okay, so let's check out very quickly and I'll just fill this out and uh, we'll get going with this. And let's go and enter our card details. By the way, the reason that these were red is this is really cool. If we try and submit this form without these, we actually get validation automatically on here on the front end. So it's really nice. We can't go anywhere unless we've entered valid details here. So let's submit this order through. And there we go. So we'll go back again. Obviously, we don't have any items in our cart now, but we now have an address. We have a customer. We have one order. We have then products associated with it, and we have a payment. So let's go back over to our order controller, and let's start to look at this uh, just here. So obviously, we need to check if an order actually exists, first of all. We need to check if it doesn't exist, we want to redirect. So let's pull in this order. And what we're going to do is we're going to say order with, so we're going to load in the address attached to that order. And we're going to load in the products attached to that order. And then we're going to say where the hash in the database equals the hash we pass in. And then we're going to grab the first record like that. And then of course, we can check if that order doesn't exist and if it doesn't we can just uh, return with a redirect so we just say with redirect and let's redirect through to the home page of course you can show an error here if you want whatever you want to do however you want this to flow through and then finally inside of here this means that this order does exist so we can just go and pass this through to our view so now if we just take this order id and we go over to orders and we just paste this in here. We now see our order page. Obviously, if it's wrong, we don't. We're redirected. 
So this is our order now. Now we can work on actually showing all of the order details with all the relationships we have. So we can output a list of the products, which is really cool. Output the address and any other information that you eventually want to get round to. So let's start by creating our row. And we're just gonna have a 12 column layout here. And at the top, we're going to uh, create say an H3 and we're gonna say order, and then we're gonna give the order number. So we can just put a hash here and say order.id. This is the actual ID from the database. So you can change this to output the hash. You can even generate a shorter hash if you want to. That's absolutely fine. Let's create an HR here and we will get on with the rest of the content. So in here, we're gonna have a two column layout. So we're gonna have a six on one side and a six on the other side. So let's say col md6 here, duplicate this down. And this one here will be the shipping address. So let's put an h4 in here with the shipping two. And down here, we'll add the address in just a moment. On this side, we will have the items that the user has ordered. So we're gonna say items, and then we'll do that down here. So we now have the following. So shipping two, and then the items that have been ordered. So for shipping to them, this is pretty straightforward because remember over on our order model, we have an address attached to this order. We already know that. So in here, we just say order dot address, address one, and you'll see that that gives us the address. And then we can just put a break on here and we can do the same for address two. We can do the same for the city and the postal code as well. And if you obviously output anything else here, you can go and uh, output that. So that's the address I entered during that checkout and that's it, that's done. So for the items, this isn't even very tricky because again, we have our relationship set up. All we need to do is loop through and output these. So we just say for product in order.product. Again, if you need to refresh your memory over in the order model, we have products attached to this. So let's end this for and inside of here, let's start to output these. We're gonna do these as anchors because we're gonna link through to the product as well. But for now, let's just output the product title. So this is just product.title, like so. And obviously here, we're gonna want something to break or something like that. You can obviously format it how you like. So these were the three items that I ordered. And then what we're also gonna do is after this, do the quantity. So we're just gonna say X. And then in here, we're gonna say product but now we don't have product.quantity in here. We have it on the pivot table. So to access this, we say dot pivot, and then we say quantity like so. And that will give us, if we go back to our browser, the quantity of each one that I ordered. Great. So now we can hook this up to the actual product page. You don't need to do this, but it's quite nice. So path for product.get. And of course, to grab a product, we need to pass in the slug. Let's just fix this up here as well. So we pass the slug in, which is obviously just the product slug. And now when we click through, we can actually go through to each of them products. So finally, and again, you can do pretty much whatever you want here. We're going to output the order total, including the shipping, which we obviously we have hard coded at the moment. So let's just create a paragraph here. We're gonna say shipping, and we're gonna hard code this in. And then after this, we're gonna break down and we'll create an order total, or at least output the order total. And again, this is easy. We already have the order passed into here. We just say order.total. And if we just go and pop a pound sign on there, we wanna add five on because we know that uh, we're hard coding this. And then here we just want to say number format with two decimal places. And there we go. So we have the uh, full uh, price of our order. And of course we can check this in the database just to make sure that that's correct. So we have order total here of 98 plus five. In actual fact, this now counts the uh, shipping. So we can actually get rid of the shipping like that. We don't really need that in there anymore. And of course, we can double check this over on the Braintree Gateway. We've had quite a few sales today. Um, and if we just go down and do a search in our transactions, we can see that we get that 98 pound payment just in there. So it looks like everything is matching up nicely. 
And with that, that is our order summary page done. Of course, feel free to change it around. Now, the last thing we want to do is redirect directly to this page after the user has checked out. That's the last thing that we need to do. So over in the order controller, then once we have created an order at the very bottom, we want to redirect. So to do this, then we just want to return response with redirect. And then from our router, we want to grab the path for order dot show. And let's go and pass through our hash in here as well. So that's just the hash that we generated earlier. And now we can go and test this out. So if I just add one item to my cart and check out, I'll go ahead and enter my details here. And we will go ahead and check out. Let's do this with PayPal now. So let's uh, proceed with this. And when we place our order now, we are redirected over to our order summary page with the total, obviously, all of our items. And uh, that is it. So through the whole checkout flow, we go ahead and add items. We enter our details. We make a payment with Braintree. And then we're redirected to our order page where we can see everything we've ordered and the order totals. I want to give a huge shout out to our friends at Braintree for supporting CoCourse. In the future, there could be a whole new way to pay. Braintree's full stack payment platform is easily adaptable to whatever the future holds, so you can easily adapt too. With one simple integration and support for any device, when that new payment method comes out, all you'll have to do is update a few lines of code. No complicated recoding, no late nights, and no stress about staying ahead of the curve. Braintree Payments is here to help. You can learn more at braintreepayments.com slash codecourse.